This video is sponsored by Himalaya Learning. According to the World Happiness Report of 2021, the happiest country in the world was Finland. Happiness is something we are familiar with, yet something we need help to find. It has prompted the rise of the self-help genre, teaching people how to achieve it. And what we all need is a life that's more meaningful, a life that's more fulfilling. Cinema portrays what it's like, and music attempts to poetically define it. In the Western world, it's almost turned into a goal we have to achieve. So much so, a new branch of psychology was built based on finding it. Many have claimed they have an answer. An unexpected source where the way to happiness is written may be hidden in Joji's music videos. Yes, I'm talking about the man that used to do this. So, what do aliens, floating donuts, and weird-looking old people teach us about how to find happiness? Welcome to Psych IRL, my name is Donna. Due to the popularity of my last video, this video is high in demand. Now, just like before, we're going to go over the imagery of the music video rather than the song lyrics. Also, these theories are just my own, so they don't necessarily mean that they're the solid, actual meaning of the music videos themselves. If you disagree with me or have other theories of your own, leave them down in the comments below. Let's begin by giving you a recap of what I felt his music videos from 2020 meant to me. George Miller, aka Joji's music videos last year, signified the perils of fame and the celebrity. This is the order I believe the lore is being told. We start off with the music video Pretty Boy, which introduces us to the world of the Hollywood celebrity. This is symbolized by an aging man who seems to be struggling to keep up with the beauty standards of the industry. Not only can you observe this with his strange overly tan complexion and botched plastic surgery, he repeatedly looks in the mirror during socially inappropriate moments. It becomes clear that the video is a take on Hollywood when this behavior is normalized by a peer of the man who looks eerily similar. They do stereotypical Hollywood things like drive in a convertible, cruise down the hills, get coffee and pose by a beach. These music videos do a great job at showcasing the obsessive nature of vanity in the entertainment industry, so much so that it goes into the realm of being inhuman. The men's movements are robotic. We additionally get a glimpse of the controlling nature of top executives, symbolized by the same old men in the video, FTC. When Joji hijacks his employer's rocket, leaving his team members behind, FTC implies that he has crash landed onto this Hollywood planet by his many personal belongings that wash up on the beach. It then shows the Hollywood executives searching for Joji, indicating right away that they want control of this newcomer. Daylight illustrates the industry's controlling nature. Also, by showcasing the unethical work environment, a lot of these big budget projects are subject to. The imagery in this music video has a number of parallels to boy band music videos in the 90s and 2000s. Joji and Diplo play crew members to the washed up boy band who look like they're on their comeback tour of the century. One boy band member I want to point out that I find very interesting is the oldest guy in green. His character to me suggests several things about Hollywood. One we already discussed, and that is that the individuals in this business are obsessed with vanity and youth. Two, nostalgia is quite the moneymaker in this trade, even when the individual is clearly past their prime. And three, the abuse that goes on in this workspace. How many meters is that? When people are standing around a computer, and hanging out around here. What are you doing? Not being very good at their job, Joji and Diplo were constantly yelled at. This character also gives me the impression that he's overworked and worn out by the business. His movements aren't as lively as the other members, and his facial expressions constantly show fatigue. Yet when Joji shows kindness, he is immediately rejected in an aggressive way. Though a small moment, I think it resembles how abuse runs rampant in entertainment. Everyone is aware of the business's shortcomings, to put it lightly, but it's ignored because that's just how it is if you want to make it to the top. The victims even partake in it themselves in fear of becoming blacklisted. So despite seeming overwhelmed, the elderly man in green refuses to show weakness in front of his peers. 
We do see Joji and Diplo rebelling against the director and overcoming the bureaucracy of the industry. But at the end of this lore, we see Joji again disheveled in the back of a limo. Being the vehicle of choice often used to symbolize celebrities and finally making it, the music video run shows viewers the reality of what celebrity stardom is actually like. Mostly people of color in the back, party goers laughing while someone is ODing in their vicinity, overly friendly people you don't know, and being held back by a number of people. The video could suggest that Joji has succumbed to the perils of fame and is struggling to break free. So the question is, why space? There are tons of imagery where Joji sits alone while in space. So is he happy with the decision he's made? If you've noticed that I glazed over the music video Gimme Love, don't fret because I believe a few of the videos from the Nectar album happened in this area. So there's the recurring motif of space, and while I do believe Joji's videos are a take on fame, they're also a take on happiness. Space is Joji's goal, and by attempting to achieve it, he attains the byproduct of fame, which makes him miserable. At the same time, the journey is also a source of happiness for him. There's something that we know about everyone we meet anywhere in the world, on the street, and that is that all of us want to be happy. That might sound odd, as there are several images of him in space that suggests it's a source of sadness but it's a little more complicated. The music video TikTok, I believe, happens in this area. More specifically, it expands upon the montage in Gimme Love. The basic premise of Gimme Love is Joji dreaming about space, working hard in the field to get a job in it, and ultimately taking control of his destiny. In the beginning of the video, we see a fast montage of his rise to success over years and years of hard work. TikTok felt like his life before his job. On the surface, the video basically looks like it's lonely Joji constantly dreaming about the cosmos, but I'm truly impressed by how detailed it goes to capture this emotion. One thing you will notice is how Joji wears a number of sports jerseys that don't show any pattern of being from one country or one team, or even one sport. Being a sports fan for a team is one of the easiest ways to feel belonging. It's one of the ways to signal belonging. All one has to do is understand the sport and be from the city the team is playing for. But even those two criteria are tentative. Wear a jersey from a certain team and strangers will easily strike up a conversation with you. Whether you're at a bar or in a stadium, someone you've never talked to can become your best friend in a moment when both your teams make a winning goal. For Joji to keep switching identities illustrates just how isolated he feels and that he craves to belong. Although one very telling scene of this is when Joji watches a group of breakdancers in the distance, you get additional glimpses of this several other places. It shows him playing basketball alone, usually a team sport. It shows what he might do to his teammate if they were to score a winning basket. He gets an extra big box of donuts meant to share, but there's no one to share it with. There even seems like an attempt from him to impress and entertain people, whether it be juggling or breakdancing. The end of this music video is fascinating. He drops the juggling act and the donuts meant to share, indicating perhaps that by the end, he's tired of pursuing empty friendships. He instead finds solace in a makeshift rocket built out of a cart, leaf blower, and streamers. The last shot is the camera panning up to the sky, leading the viewer to conclude Joji's happiness is in the stars. The next video in the lore is another one that I believe also expands upon the Gimme Love montage. While TikTok depicts Joji's life before his aerospace job, the music video upgrade is his life during it. He is dressed nicer and his mood looks a lot better because he's one step closer at achieving his goal of being in space. You see that as he orders the donut this time. As opposed to having a big box with no one to share it with, we see him actually satisfied with one for himself. As he falls asleep on the plane, you see him constantly dreaming about his goal. You actually see this obsession in other music videos where Joji hasn't reached fame just yet. So what was the turning point from this to this? Well, actually, the answer may come from today's sponsor, and that's Himalaya. Himalaya Learning is an audio-first educational platform. Unlike other learning platforms where courses can be taught by anyone, Himalaya features courses taught by world-class experts and industry leaders like Elon Musk, 
Harvard professors, and economists. They've just launched their happiness series, and personally, I love the course Stop Chasing Happiness by best-selling author Mark Manson. What I really like about this course in particular is that it's a no BS course on happiness, and everything Manson says is evidence-based. What's even better is that it kind of supports the happiness theory in Joji's music videos. Of course, Joji's videos theorizes it in a very artistic way, but because these two worlds collide, it's made me appreciate just how intelligent these videos are. Now, if you don't care about happiness, Himalaya's curated learning tracks make it easy to find courses on other topics you might like to level up your personal growth. Something unique about Himalaya is that each of their audio lessons are less than 10 minutes a lesson. If you're thinking there's no way anyone can learn something in less than 10 minutes, each lesson is designed so that you're taught something actionable and practical, so you actually cut out a lot of noise in, say, a 30-minute lesson. Of course, there's nothing wrong with a 30-minute lesson, but it's cool that you can have other options. You can learn anywhere, laundry, cooking, dishes, exercise. The best part is you'll have access to all Himalaya's content for less than six bucks a month. But today I get to hook you guys up with 90 days free access for a limited time. For a limited time, use the link Himalaya.com slash psychirl for an exclusive 90 day free membership to Himalaya Learning. That's H-I-M-A-L-A-Y-A dot com slash P-S-Y-C-H-I-R-L all lowercase. Be sure to use the promo code PSYCHIRL at checkout. The Stop Chasing Happiness course went over a study that had participants carry with them pagers everywhere they went. They would get paged at random times throughout their day. And when they would, researchers asked them to write down how happy they were from 1 to 10. The study found that on average, people felt about a 7 throughout their day. When paged during a really happy moment where they rated themselves a 10, to what? A million dollars. Are you kidding me? Researchers found that over time, people would eventually come back down to a seven. Similarly, when paged during a stressful moment where people would rate themselves as a four, over time, people would eventually get back up to the baseline of seven. A pessimist may say, well, we're doomed to a life of slight dissatisfaction for eternity. But I want you to think about what propels you forward in life. What motivates you to take the new job, travel for the hell of it, start a new business, get into a relationship, anything out of your comfort zone? It is this slight dissatisfaction. Life is the dance between what you desire most and what you fear most. That's where people play. You get an urge to change something in your life because you aren't satisfied. And many times by you taking action, it leads to something better. Does this mean every grueling and soul-sucking event in your life will lead you to a 10 eventually? No. What it might suggest is, if we are doomed to a life of eternal slight dissatisfaction, it's important to choose the struggles we want. That can be having kids, exercise, or doing a job you love. All these instances require work and some amount of sacrifice, but the end result is fulfillment. Well, depending on your personality, of course. Some people don't want kids, and that's totally cool. Joji's music videos illustrate Manson's point and the study mentioned. As he sits on the plane, he's still alone. Yet, here he seems somewhat more satisfied with his life than here. I think a lot of that is because this time he's picking a struggle he wants to have. In TikTok, Joji was seeking fulfillment by attempting to fit in with a group of people he didn't identify with. How do you do, fellow kids? We've all had some experience with that, where we act a certain way to gain the approval of people who aren't even that great. Of course, Joji is still seeking connection. You see him still making an effort to impress his co-workers with his juggling act. You see how lonely he looks on other planets. But he realizes there are sacrifices that come with his goals, and for now, he's willing to make them. I'm Ella. I will be filling in for my sister Donna for this segment. Because I look like trash. So we wanted to see how true the study mentioned in the course was. We asked you on Instagram. Stop what you're doing and tell me from 1 to 10, how happy are you at the moment? Also, if you want to be part of the video, tell me what number you picked and tell me what you're currently doing now, or if you're procrastinating, tell me what you were doing before this. Six, just took a break from a whirlwind of work because my spouse called, now I guess I'm procrastinating because somehow I'm on Insta now. Four, 
because I'm on a diet, but I'm so hungry and I hate it, but it could be worse. Seven slash 7.5, I just woke up, but I started working towards my goal of becoming a full-time freelance photographer slash videographer. So me being motivated and busy is keeping me happy. Four, procrastinating on my master's thesis by scrolling through Insta. I just don't get why I'm still like this and I'm studying psychology, LOL. I picked number three. I was getting dressed and picked up my phone and actually acknowledged what the day is. I sit next to an annoying person in science. I'm failing maths and I have a doctor's appointment. What's interesting is that your guys' mood is average lower than the studies. Now this could be because people's moods were low and they're using their phone to cope or other research has shown that people have different baselines. One thing I really appreciate about Joji's music videos is that it's not the traditional happy ending that you get in cinema. Traditionally, happiness in cinema is often portrayed as a destination. The protagonist goes through life's rough battles until they finally achieve success. The viewer will perceive life for the character to remain constant after the film's final scene. Disney movies and romantic comedies are notorious for distorting the way we perceive relationships, for instance. These stories focus on the meeting and the honeymoon phase, that after you get the boy or girl, this is your happily ever after. Through life experience, we all know that after happily ever after comes the hard part. Even when movies end poorly, the resolution still frequently leaves the viewer feeling like the protagonist is stuck in the final scene. This is just the way narratives are structured. It paints life like an uphill battle till we face our demons and then get our resolution. Real life looks more like this, and the pager study previously mentioned supports that notion. Joji's music videos do as well. If this were a film, the ending of the story would be Joji achieving his goals when he hijacks the rocket, but the music videos take a different route. Despite the science fiction, the happiness theory in these videos is a lot closer to real life. They don't shy away from showing what happens after happily ever after. That is represented by the music video, Your Man. Truth be told, I can't figure out where this video is on the timeline just yet, so we'll put a pin on this matter for now. What this shows to me is that although chasing the goal of being in space is something that brings Joji happiness, it is also a source of danger and struggle. That is represented by this creature that lands on what looks to be Earth. In past interviews, Miller has explained how fans of his tend to see his old Filthy Frank work in his newer projects. I like making funny faces, you know, I'm a silly guy, like if I like make a a silly face, like it's, it, that's my face, you know. But people are like, "Oh, like there's still a bit of bit of bit of pink eye in him," <laughs> and I'm like, "Ah, yeah, I guess there is." But it's really just me making a face. I really can't help but notice that in this video, the creature's movements are very similar to Pink Eye, leading me to believe it's a take on his past haunting his new work. Fans have also seen similarities from other videos, but again, I don't know if it's just because that's what my brain is looking for. So for now, it's unclear. What is clear to me is that this creature paints some sort of struggle that simultaneously comes from his source of happiness. What I really like about the space motif in Joji's music videos is how well they represent chasing goals. We have an idea of the vastness of the cosmos, but because it remains largely unexplored, what space really looks like is up to the imagination, and it may be imagined differently for each person. Goals are the same way and also vary from person to person. Like space, the limits to our goals are endless and we don't know what struggles will come from them to achieve them. What we do know is that struggle will come regardless of which path you choose. The path to stay put or the path to venture out. So what we must do is choose the struggles that are worth having. Miller's music videos were intelligently released to convey that point. The first one was Run, illustrating the perils of fame. Then after that, the viewer is led scene after scene showing how Joji has arrived to this point. It places the viewer at a point of decision. Knowing the results of chasing happiness, was it worth for Joji to go down this path? So what makes you happy? That's the end of the video. I'll see you guys next time. Stay psyched.